Hello and welcome everyone to my latest conversation with a member of Team Radical. I'm Doreen Rainey, your Radical Success Coach, and I want you guys to say hello to Yolanda Adams. Hello, Yolanda. Hello, Doreen, and hello, Doreen's audience. I'm so excited to be with you today. Yes, well, I'm excited to have Yolanda here because she's been a part of our Radical community for a minute now, and I wanted her to share a little bit about who she is and what she does, and then we're gonna talk a little bit about some tips about managing your business, being an entrepreneur, and then also a little bit about your experience um, attending my Radical events. Yes. So let's jump right into this. First of all, tell them a little bit about you, who you are, and what you do. Okay. So my name is Yolanda Adams, not the gospel singer, but I do love God. <laughs> and um, I own, I am the owner, CEO of Best Day Senior Living. And Best Day Senior Living is an assisted living facility in Pickerington, Ohio where we provide uh, services to our residents who have dementia, who can no longer live alone. And so um, they had to make a decision, them and their family, of the best place for them to be, where they could be safe and taken care of in a loving, nurturing environment. And we have been very fortunate um, to stay pretty full. We're licensed with the state of Ohio for five residents. Um, and we stay pretty consistent at four or five residents. And we've been doing it for about four years. Uh, we love what we do, very compassionate um, employees, staff people um, to help just kind of push our vision along. We just wanted to create something um, for seniors that was a little bit smaller and a little bit more intimate than one of the larger assisted living facilities. And we came up with this concept and we've been doing it, like I said, for about four years. And what was it that prompted you to go into this particular type of business? and how long had you been thinking about it and, and what did you do to kind of prepare to really bring this vision to reality? Mm -hmm. um, I got the idea, I'm an occupational therapist and have been for almost 25 years and had worked in assisted living facilities and in nursing homes and just really felt like the residents weren't getting the care and attention that they needed. And I don't know that it was so much because the staff didn't want to do it, but it's very difficult to provide care to 15, 20 residents at a time and be able to meet their needs personally and intimately. And so, you know, you would be in a setting like that and I'll give a, for instance, you know, someone will put on a call light and it might take 20, 30 minutes, you know, for them to get the attention that they needed and all, thing, all kinds of things, you know, happen within those 20, 30 minutes. Um, before the light was answered. And again, I don't feel that it was because they didn't want to. They just had those, those limitations. They just, it's just difficult to take care of that many patients at one time. And so um, my husband and I, you know, we talked about it for a really long time. We have uh, two children and we wanted to wait until they graduated from high school before we did it. And so we have been working, you know, on and on on our business plan and just getting things in place, getting things in order for it. And when the time came, we were ready and we opened up the business and our model is very, it's going very well. Like I said, we have five residents. So to be able for one staff person or two staff people to take care of five people, you're able to meet their needs a lot more efficiently, able to um, provide some personal, personal care. You're able to sit and talk to them about things that they used to do, you know, as much as they can remember and just, you know, talk about the weather, talk about the day, you know, if they're not ready to take a shower, you know, when you approach them the first time, you can go back and say, okay, well, we'll try it again, you know, in 30 minutes, whereas you don't have that luxury when you have 15 people to give a shower to in one day. And so that's how we came up with it. Yeah. And when you launched your business and how, and you've been in business for about four years, right? Yes. Yes. What have been some of the biggest lessons that you've learned as an entrepreneur, as a business owner that you know would be helpful to those people tuning in right now? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think just, um, and this, this actually didn't take place for me until I started attending your radical success um, seminars and just the work that I've been doing with you here recently, I had to make the take the mind make the mind shift from being the owner and the operator to being the CEO because it's quite different. And you know, 
I just really appreciate all that I have learned with you. And, you know, the business is going well, it's running, you know, efficiently, but in order to get, you know, to that next level, I had to make that shift in my mindset that I felt actually a little arrogant to call myself a CEO. And I'm still kind of hesitant to do it even now, but the buck stops with me. It stops with me. And to be able to make that a transition into owner operator into CEO it's just caused me to look at the business from a whole different perspective to make sure that um, you teach us about the four pillars to make sure you know all those four pillars are in place and it's just like with any other structure if there's a pillar holding the structure up if one of the pillars is out of place the whole structure is gonna fall and it can't one pillar can't be higher than another again it's gonna be a lopsided foundation a lopsided business and so um, to be able to make that shift. And so, you know, I would say, you know, to any entrepreneur that you have to stick with it. Success does not just happen. <laughs> you teach us that it does not, success does not just come. It has to be planned. It has to be worked at. And ultimately I am so grateful that I'm doing something that I'm passionate about because even though that CE work part isn't always pretty, I love it. I love what I do. I love serving seniors. And so it just makes me more responsible for the business. And you have to have that responsibility as a CEO because I don't want this to last for two or three years. I want it to last. You know, I want some longevity with it. I want to be able, you know, to leave it to my children. And you can't do that if you don't make, if I wouldn't have been able to do that if I had not started making that shift to being the CEO. Yes. Yes. And you talked about the four pillars and what she's referring to is their business foundation is built on operations, marketing, sales, and your financials. Mm -hmm. And you have to pay attention to all of those. Yes. Um, when you don't, you do find yourself having a lopsided business. Mm -hmm. Marketing gets you known, sales gets you paid, mm -hmm. operations keeps you efficient, and the financials keep you profitable. And if yeah. you paying attention and managing all of those, then your business is subject to have some real challenges along the way. Yes. 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 And, and that's what I, I found, you know, have been doing, you know, some marketing, some sales, well, obviously sales because we have the residents, obviously the marketing, um, again, because we have the residents, but I hadn't, I didn't pay a whole lot of attention to particularly in my case, the financials, because it was so daunting, just so afraid of it. And you were like, fall in love with money. Yeah. A different relationship with money. You have yeah. to love your money, you know, and, and not in a sense that your, your money is ruling you, but that you're being a wise steward over it. Because the reality is, is that God gave this to us and we have to be wise stewards over it. And I just, I just shut my eyes. I folded my arms. I'm not doing anything financial. I'm not looking at the profit. I'm not looking at any of those things. And again, when I made that shift from owner operator to CEO, like you said, you have to look at the financials or it's lopsided. You have to look at the operations or it's lopsided. And so um, just, you know, the help that you've given me and that we've been working on is just, I feel has made my business a lot more balanced. And that's not to say that I'm there, I'm not proclaiming that, but I am working very hard at it. And with the instruction that you've given me, I just see a total difference in just the way that I look at it. I actually enjoy it a little more. You know, um, you get so caught up in being the practitioner and, and doing the operational things. But when you are able to sit back and look at it as a visionary and see the whole piece, I'm actually enjoying it, you know, a little bit more. It doesn't feel daunting. Yeah, so, it doesn't yeah. feel daunting. It doesn't. And it's the way that you can scale and grow mm -hmm. ready for more property, more um, uh, elderly patients coming in and more yeah. what you love. Mm -hmm. Having all four of those pillars is critical if you want to grow, if you want to leverage, you want to um, expand. So right. and I know that um, you've come to some radical events. So mm -hmm. tell us about your experience there. What are three things that you really love about the experience? Um, number one, and I think the thing that most impressed me 
Um, you know, I've, I've been on seeing your podcasts and things like that. And to be in the room with you, and I promise I'm not just saying this, you are so approachable, so down to earth, and you make it so attainable. You know, I think I felt a lot of times when you see people, you know, at a higher level than you are, that they're untouchable and, you know, that, that that's not something that you can attain. But um, the one thing, you just made it very attainable and shown us how to do it. You've given us the tools um, of, of what we need to do and how to do it. So that would be one thing. Um, I think the second thing is you give us the tools, but you have to use the tools. I mean, the reality is if I have a toolbox sitting next to a shed and I never open that toolbox and never use a tool, you know, then the shed's not going to be built or whatever it is that I'm working on is not going to take place. You have to take responsibility and you have to use the tools. You have to use the tools that, that, that you make available to us. And again, you make it in a way that it is obtainable. You keep us accountable. It's not like you're standing there lecturing. You are going to participate. You are going to be involved. And that's important. That's important for me. And I think it doesn't matter what type of learner that you are to be in the environment that you create, it makes you do, it makes you successful. And you know, it, someone may need to write it out to do it. Someone needs to hear it to do it, but you get all of those things um, in your class. And then I think the third thing is the camaraderie, the camaraderie. Um, with all the other participants and just, you know, developing, you know, those relationships, those sisterhoods, those brotherhoods, um, you know, with other people who are like-minded. Um, and that's the thing, you know, um, my, I can't remember where I've heard it. I've heard family members even say it too. If you hang around with chickens, you'll never soar like an eagle. Right. So to be, you know, in an environment with eagles, eagles at different levels, but still yet all, you know, looking to um, better some part of your life, not, you know, just business, but just overall, it just, you know, forces you to uh, be able to do that because of the camaraderie and just the relationships. And I just, I mean, I'm in love, in love with the Reed Rady stuff. <laughs> Uh, and actually, you're speaking to um, the camaraderie and using the tools. And a lot of what I talk about, of course, is not just being a business owner and entrepreneur, but I'm really big on that personal transformation yeah. and personal growth. Mm -hmm. And what have you been able to um, really expand on or shift or change from a personal perspective? Mm -hmm. And how has that shown up in your business? Mm -hmm. Um, personally, I think, um, you talk a lot about, uh, chatter, the chatter that's in your ear and, you know, those things that distract you. And I think personally, you know, I've learned to, first of all, quiet my own personal chatter that I can't do it. I won't do it. It can't be done. You know, those are, you know, things that, you know, I may not have said it out loud, but my actions showed, you know, that I was afraid and, you know, that I just, you know, felt like I couldn't attain better and attain more. And so personally, just being able to know, hey, that's chatter, that's noise, you need to get rid of it if you're going to move forward. And that's something that's applicable to all parts of my life, not just my business, but everything with everything that I'm doing. And, and I just love how, you know, the information that you share and the material that you give can be applied to so many different parts of your life and not just one area. So, you know, I think I've grown uh, personally in that aspect. And I think um, everyone can relate on some level. I mean, one of the biggest challenges that people always deal with is fear. Mm -hmm. Fear of success, fear of failure, fear of getting started, fear of being judged, fear mm -hmm. of being out there. Mm -hmm. um, all of those kinds of fears that kind of will hinder us and stop us if we right. don't know how to manage or mitigate them. Mm -hmm. um, so when you think about some of the fears that you've had or some of the areas that you've been able to move forward from, what advice would you give to people now that you've done some of this work in terms of getting past their fears? Mm -hmm. or stepping out there and taking that risk or taking that chance? Mm -hmm. I think I would say, you know, for me, it was just the accountability of, of if you're saying that this is what you want in life and you want to get past these things is having someone um, such as yourself in the environments that you create that 
are safe places to be vulnerable, safe places to say, you know, I'm the first person in my family to own a business and I don't know how my family's gonna look at me, you know, if I, you know, as I'm prospering and, and you know, doing really what God has called for me to do. And so I would say, you know, just to have, have that someone there that's committed to helping you to get better, I think, you know, has been very helpful for me. Yeah, yeah. And I know, Yolanda, that you are in business with your hubby. Yes. And I know we have many people um, in this group and, you know, entrepreneurs who are working with their spouse or working with family members. So what advice would you give to people to make those relationships work? How do you keep it separate? Do you keep it separate? How do you guys communicate? How does all of that play out when you're in business with someone in your family? And yeah. Spouse. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so you certainly have to, my husband always says your brain never turns off. He <laughs> says you are always thinking, we'll be driving in the car and I will have had like 15 conversations in 15 minutes about 15 different things. And he's like, your brain never turns off. And so we had to get to the point where we allocated time. Okay, this is time that we're going to talk about the business. I always have to feed him first. He has to have a full belly. <laughs> And so just knowing him, um, we've been married for 25 years. And so just knowing him and knowing, you know, the person that you're working with um, is definitely something that you need to have. And we just had to set those times and set those boundaries. Do I good, do a good job of keeping those boundaries all the time? Not usually, <laughs> but he, he knows me and knows that, you know, I'm just trying to make things, want things better for us and for our children that he respects that for me, but, you know, just creating the space to be myself, creating a space for him to be himself and just setting those times and setting those, those times aside. Okay. We're at dinner. We're not talking about anything business. We're talking about us and talking about our day and, you know, those kinds of things and, and just setting, setting times up for specifically talking about the business. So I'll go, okay, we need to have a business meeting. And so, you know, or he'll say, hey, we need to talk about those numbers. <laughs> and so, um, and so just kind of putting it, you know, in that perspective and just respecting those boundaries as best as we can. Yes, yes, yes. Good advice. Real yeah. good advice. Um, and so, you know, Yolanda is also in my business cohort. It's a um, small group mastermind where I coach um, entrepreneurs and business owners who are really up leveling every area of their business and she's also going to be joining us at the upcoming get radical women's conference march 20th through 22nd in atlanta and i'm so excited about this yeah. conference. many of you yeah. know that um when i was working with steve harvey on his conference that get radical took a break and now we're back and we've got incredible speakers planned we have nicole Ari parker actress businesswoman wife mother we have Jennifer Justice. She's the former general counsel for Jay-Z's Rock Nation. And she's going to be talking about negotiating equal pay, getting paid what you're worth as a woman, and really stepping into the arena of building wealth um, for women. And then we also have the incredible Mona Sharma, who is a holistic wellness coach, who is working with Will and Jada um, Pinkett Smith on getting their health and their numbers in line. And she's going to be sharing with us how we can make sure we take care of ourselves from the inside out. And then, of course, we have the adventure risk taker travel channel host, Kelly Edwards, um, talking about taking a risk and building a brand and getting noticed out in the world to create the business that you really want. And so, Yolanda, when you talk about coming to my events and what you've experienced, why should people come out to a radical event? I think, <laughs> oh, I just, I just tear up when I think about it, honestly, Doreen, just the... <clears throat> I think as a woman, you hold so many roles and there's so much placed on your shoulders to be able to pull yourself away and say, this is for me. This time is for me to get what I need. This time is for me to be, to help me to be a better wife, to help me to be a better mother, to help me to be a better sister and all of the roles that you carry. It's so important to be able to pull yourself out of your everyday situations and be free in a safe environment to be able to just be you, to be able to be you, all things, you know, left behind, all things outside of that room and just be yourself. 
And that's what I'm most looking forward to. And I'm going to bring my daughter. And so I'm looking forward, you know, to being able to, to expose her uh, to those kinds of things. She has her own business as well. And, you know, I just want her to um, get started the right way. You know, I mean, I've learned so much along the way, but for her to be able to gain those nuggets early on in her business, I think will be very uh, crucial for her. And so, again, just to get away and, and to be with other like-minded people and there's just so much intimate personal growth inside inside those things you know you think you go for one thing and you get something totally other you know within that meeting and within that group and so you know I just think it is for you know because it's a women's conference I think all women owe it to yourself to just invest in you and that that's really what it is it's an investment into yourself right yeah Absolutely. I so agree with taking the time, setting aside, investing in yourself, getting the things that you need to really manage all of the roles or even maybe delegate, mitigate or eliminate some of the yeah. roles you're taking on as well. Yeah. Um, and I know as an entrepreneur, as a woman, a wife, a mother, all the roles that you have going on, there are times when stress can't help but rear its ugly head or overwhelm yeah. can't help but set in. So as we wrap up the conversation, share with us what do you do when you're starting to feel that overwhelm, when you're starting mm -hmm. to feel the stress of all the roles that you have going on? What advice would you give to help people mm -hmm. manage that, deal with that, um, and mm -hmm. get back to a place of you know sanity? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, for me, definitely just being centered in Christ uh, helps me quite a bit with that. And I think that anyone can just set a time aside for quietness set aside time to be quiet and just hear what you hear from whoever you hear from. I hear from God. And so, you know, just, just setting that time aside and just kind of pulling myself back into perspective. And it's when I get quiet that I realize it really isn't as big as it looks or as it appears to be. And just being able, you know, like I said, to just pull myself aside and be quiet and listen um, I'm not real big on writing. I mean, writing definitely helps. Um, and I'm sure, you know, if someone is a journal, does journaling, that that'll definitely help with them. But I just think just setting aside, aside time to be quiet and doing whatever you do to get you back balanced when you're quiet. Yeah. And I also think that a lot of times we hear that and we're going, oh my gosh, for my day, my schedule. And I think the beauty of that advice is that if you could find five minutes, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It's not that you got to go find 60 minutes, two hours, go yeah. massage, yeah. Go find, you know, mm -hmm. just like, it's high. <laughs> really yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, and just, and just that moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah. Great, great, great advice. Well, mm -hmm. thank you so much, Yolanda. You're for welcome. Having... You're welcome. It's my pleasure. It's exciting. Well, um, and I know that in your industry, um, you've done a lot of education. Your career background fits you perfectly into a career, plus your compassion that you have for other people. Mm -hmm. And if people want to get in touch with you, reach out to you, um, they're interested in actually housing some of their family members, how can they get in touch with you? Mm -hmm. um, we have a website, um, www.bestdaysseniorliving.com. And also our email, bestdaysseniorliving at gmail.com. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you so much. You You're love. welcome. Pleasure. Uh-huh.